The shelf life of a product begins from the time the food is prepared or manufactured. Its length is dependent on many factors including the types of ingredients. Manufacturing process. Type of packaging. I will write this part again, unless you cannot see that. And another one is how the food is stored. Shelf life is defined as the time during which the food product will remain safe. Be certain to retain desired sensory, chemical, physical and microbiological characteristics. Comply with any label declaration of nutritional data. when stored under the recommended conditions. The next important point is that who is responsible for determining the shelf life? Food manufacturers, repackers, secondary packers, supermarkets. Everyone in this food production chain has an influence on food quality and safety.
It is not possible to be confident that food is safe unless a food control plan is in place that identifies and controls hazards throughout the food chain. The role of each person in the food chain should be considered. They are farmers. Manufacturers. Distributors. Other suppliers like retailers and don't forget that we, consumers are also influencing the shelf life. Many factors can influence shelf life, and can be categorized into intrinsic and extrinsic factors. Intrinsic factors are the properties of the final product. They include the following. Water activity, pH value and total acidity, type of acid, redox potential, available oxygen, nutrients, natural microflora and surviving microbiological counts, natural biochemistry of the product formulation such as enzymes, chemical reactants, use of preservatives in product formulation, as salt or brine. Intrinsic factors are influenced by such variables as raw material type and quality, and product formulation and structure. Extrinsic factors are those factors the final product encounters as it moves through the food chain. They include the following. Time temperature profile during processing, pressure in the headspace. Temperature control during storage and distribution. Relative humidity during processing, storage and distribution. Exposure to light UV and IR during processing, storage and distribution.
environmental microbial counts during processing, storage and distribution. Composition of atmosphere within packaging. Subsequent heat treatment. Consumer handling. The interaction of such intrinsic and extrinsic factors as these either inhibits or stimulates a number of processes which limit shelf life. These processes can be conveniently classified as Microbiological Chemical Physical Temperature related The factors described in the previous sections can result in a wide range of deterioration changes, and these will depend on the food type. This table shows some examples of the main deterioration changes in a variety of food classes, and the consequential factors limiting shelf life. Sensory panels. Measurement of the changes in eating quality on storage requires the use of sensory techniques. Instrumental methods. Physical measurements. The most commonly used physical tests measure the changes in the texture of products. Chemical measurements. Chemical analyzers play a vital role in shelf life testing as they can be used either to measure the end points of chemical reactions occurring in food during storage, or to confirm the results obtained by the sensory panels. Microbiological measurements. There are two important aspects to be considered in determining the microbiological stability of a product. 1. Microbial growth which leads to the spoilage of a food product. 2. The growth of microbial pathogens that affect the safety of the product. We hope to discuss on these methods in detail from future lessons. Shelf life predicting by accelerated shelf life testing or predictive models the basic premise of an accelerated test is that by changing a storage condition, the chemical or physical process that leads to deterioration is accelerated, and that a predictive shelf life relationship related to ambient conditions can be defined. The food industry has long been interested in ways of predicting rates of deterioration change resulting from differing combinations of intrinsic and extrinsic factors. Such models look for statistical and mathematical relationships between three sets of variables. Intrinsic factors, extrinsic factors and implicit factors, the characteristics of the microorganism itself and how it behaves in the presence of combinations of intrinsic and extrinsic factors. Such models need to be based on good experimental data mapping rates of change within given combinations of factors. We hope that you have got a basic idea on how to determine shelf life of a food from this introduction.
Stay tuned with Food Desk. We hope to explain more on this topic under Study with Food Desk playlist. Thanks for watching. Food Desk, it is all about food.